Hello everyone, my name's Sean O'Neill and I'm here to count down our top 5 science videos of 2008. We've had a pretty impressive selection this year. The runners-up included the first 3D animation showing how a zebrafish embryo develops right after fertilisation. And this dramatic footage revealed how the fastest flowing glacier in Greenland is contributing to rising sea levels. But now it's time to find out which of the videos were most popular with you, the viewer. Now if you're driving home for Christmas this year, beware. Our video at number 5 shows how traffic jams can appear out of nowhere. For the first time, Japanese researchers have conducted a real-life experiment that shows how some traffic jams appear for no apparent reason. They placed 22 vehicles on a single track and asked the drivers to cruise round at a constant speed of 30 kilometers an hour. At first, traffic moved smoothly, but soon the distance between cars started to vary and vehicles clumped together at one point on the track. So the jam spread backwards around the track like a shock wave at a rate of about 20 kilometers an hour. Real life jams move backwards at about the same speed. Next, we've seen both monkeys and humans control robots with their brain signals. Now it seems like rat power is just a whisker away. You may think you have little in common with this robot, but it is controlled by living brain cells much like those inside your own head. Researchers grew a collection of around 300,000 rat brain cells in the lab. The cells quickly grow collections to each other and start communicating using electrical pulses. When the clump of cells was connected to electrodes, some parts of it were found to respond predictably to signals from the robot's ultrasound distance sensor. The output from these cells can be used to control the robot's motor circuits, preventing it from bumping into obstacles. Because the brain cannot leave the lab, it communicates with the robot wirelessly. The team planned to use their robot's brain power for new patterns of behaviour in future. They hope there are enough similarities to teach us about unknown aspects of our own brain activity. Sliding in at number three, we have an ancient gadget which was seemingly too sophisticated for its time. Almost like finding an iPod in Elvis Presley's back pocket. This is a reconstruction of a 2,000-year-old computer. The original battered pieces were found in a shipwreck more than a century ago, and Michael Wright, a museum curator from London, spent decades studying them in order to work out what the device was for. On the front dial, we've got two scales. The inner ring is the zodiac, divided into degrees. The outer ring is an annual calendar scale, 365 days. The device is a machine for predicting the motions of the heavens. When you turn the handle on the side, pointers move around the front dial, showing the movements of the sun, moon and the five planets that the Greeks knew. Inside, a sophisticated setup of wheels riding around on other wheels models the varying motions of the planets, according to the Greeks' astronomical theories. Now we'll look at the back. The upper one is basically a calendar. The spiral scale is divided into months, each of which is named, and this is a cycle of uh, months, uh, 235 months, which fit into 19 years. These are months measured by the moon. The lower display is giving the times at which there may be uh, eclipses. Again, it's graduated into months, and the markings are just in those months in which uh, we, we expect there to be an eclipse either of the moon or of the sun or of both. Inside the mechanism you can see the gear trains that drive the pointers on the back dial. This is the first model of the Antikythera mechanism to incorporate all of its known features. Thanks to Michael Wright it's working again for the first time in 2000 years. At number two we leave technology both old and new behind and we crash a party at the bottom of the ocean. Scientists filming in one of the world's deepest ocean trenches have found groups of highly sociable snailfish swarming over their bait, nearly five miles beneath the surface of the Pacific Ocean. This is the first time cameras have been sent to this depth. Although some species of snailfish live in the shallow water, the Hadal snailfish are found exclusively below 6,000 metres. Here they have to contend with total darkness, near freezing temperatures and immense water pressure. They feed on thousands of tiny shrimp-like creatures that scavenge the carcasses of dead fish reaching the ocean floor. The deep-sea equipment needed to survive the extreme pressure at these depths was designed and built specifically for this mission. And finally, everybody's heard of Through the Keyhole, but our top video of the year is going to take you through the vaginal wall and deep into the body. Brace yourself. This is the first ever video footage of ovulation, captured with an endoscope inserted through a cut in the woman's vaginal wall. The patient monitored her temperature and hormones to predict when she was about to ovulate and when to begin the filming. Here you can see the ovary in the end of the fallopian tube covered with finger-like protrusions called fimbriae. A mucus plug containing the egg breaks away from the ovary. 
The fingers move in time to the woman's heartbeat and become more distinct when they reach for the egg. Eventually, they'll sweep the egg into the fallopian tube, where it will pass into the uterus. The researchers managed to capture this video footage on their first attempt. That's all for this year, but stay tuned for a whole new set of videos in 2009. And if you're in the mood for some science over the holidays, you'll find all our latest videos on our newly designed website at newscientist.com. Have a happy holiday season and make a resolution to come back and see us in the new year. Bye for now.